What's up, everybody? Chris Gover here, founder of Pollinate Trading. And today we're going to check back in on our positions this week from the lab. If you are interested in seeing uh, these trades with us live, joining with us, get involved in the community, pollinatetrading.com slash lab is where you can do that. Or go ahead and sign up for the uh, free newsletter, pollinatetrading.com. And, you know, we get, we get this stuff. All right, let's get right into it. Okay, in yesterday's email I and video, I put out our trade on Tesla, and I'm just going to update to where we are right now. Uh, we got in last week in the trading lab around 186 to 188. I can't remember the underlying because we went out and bought the calls, uh, but it was based on the uh, the um, breakout retest. So this up move down and then that one right there. And so we got in over here. Uh, right, let's call it uh, 180. We'll call it 188. Uh, currently trading at 2.30, so um, almost 45 or so, 40, 42, so I don't know, whatever, 40-something points higher, uh, which is about 180% on the calls we bought. I really don't have any intention of uh, getting out of this anytime soon. Uh, the, uh, we bought the 360 calls for December, so, you know, pretty, pretty big uh, move to be to to be had you can see the last uh you know last big move after uh uh something that i'm ex expecting something similar you know went from 181 to 420 ish haha <laughs> um so you know i'm looking for you know a 180 to you know four or five hundred area um on this in this move hopefully within a six month block we'll see if that happens uh, in other words, I am not selling. I've got a number of uh, questions today uh, in the lab and and also uh, responses to the email saying yesterday's newsletter email saying, hey, uh, are you taking some off the table here? No, I am not. Uh, let's take a look at the Apple trade now. So similar sort of scenario, two or three weeks ago, Apple had the Worldwide Developer Conference and uh, just showed how they are actually going to be implementing and, and, you know, making AI tools useful as opposed to, Hey, we've created another model. Hey, our model's better. Your model, blah, 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 model, 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 model. Um, they basically said, cool. Yeah. We're just going to use all that stuff. We have our own silicone that's built for this sort of thing. We're going to most likely they're going to have their own, or they're going to do something similar to what they did with, um, Google, which is, uh, the default search engine in their uh, Safari browser is Google, and Google pays them billions of dollars for that. Uh, I believe a similar sort of thing might happen with the LLMs. Um, we'll see. Anyway, uh, not for speculation. Who knows what's going to look like? But they own the best closed environment. Apple does uh, most lucrative. And, you know, you, you pay a pretty penny for the high quality chips that they make themselves. They don't pay NVIDIA for it. They don't pay Qualcomm. They don't pay these other companies to build the chips for their Apple devices. They make their own chips uh, for their own devices so they can be specifically perfect for their own system. Uh, that's probably really going to have a difference as we go forward when you see kind of the whole suite of Apple products being able to utilize AI in a far more walled garden secure environment. Um, and, you know, obviously Siri was something that uh, don't turn on around here. I mentioned you uh, was something that uh, has, has always been um, not, maybe not always, but, but it has been lacking the promise or the desire that what everybody was really after with it. Uh, when you look at what's, going to be available with uh, Apple having their own silicone and their own, you know, closed ecosystem, being able to use uh, generative AI LLMs and such to interact across all devices that are on the same, you know, all your Apple devices at the same time. So uh, when people really started to realize what it wasn't just a goggle update or a new, new device, they, they really implemented the technology that's out there into all of their products, it suddenly became very obvious how uh, 
how lucrative this would be. Uh, now you just think about how right now you can sit for a couple of years on a, on a, on a new iPhone. Whereas, you know, when, when you've got the latest and greatest and best AI needing to be on the latest chips, um, you are almost forced to upgrade. And that calculus was, ah, you know, whatever, I'll sit with my two or three or even four year old iPhone and I'll be fine. Doesn't really move the needle all that much. No big deal. Oh, another camera, blah, 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 whatever. Now it's like, oh, I have to have the M3. I have to have this chip. I, I can't do it without that chip or I can't do these tasks that I can do with the new. And so it's just, it really reinvigorated the upgrade cycle there. So uh, that really kicked off the, that, that got me pretty excited about that. Um, and so I got in over here, similar sort of pattern, breakout, came back just sat there. Nothing had, didn't move really anywhere. It came down a little bit and then it started to move, take off. So we got in a week or two ago around the 216, 218 area. Um, I bought the uh, 320 calls for December. Uh, these are all deep out of the money call plays. Okay. So you're putting in, you know, like a, a very small position um, with very low Delta to capture a, a very big upside move. I do that infrequently. It's not how I usually don't even trade. I don't trade options all that often. When I do, I trade them this way because I'm actually looking to do like a, a 10 to one sort of 20 to one sort of return on the options uh, and take a very low risk approach to capturing the big trend. It's a, my, it's, it's my opinion that we are in to heading into a period of big expansion still, um, surprisingly, I feel like I'm the only one uh, on the internet who is actually bullish and not just bullish uh, that, um, you know, things are things are doing better, but bullish that we're at the very beginning of something very, very big. And I'm also a guy who's been in this game for a long time, so I'm not of the, you know, naive bullish side. <laughs> I'm on, I would consider myself more on the right curve side of that. Um, mid curving are always shorting these sort of things. So uh, let's go to Bitcoin. Uh, I talked a lot. I've been talking a lot about this Bitcoin setup here. Um, very similar to the one we had back in January of 2024. Uh, a very similar setup. And as you can see, had that breakdown, had a final breakdown capitulation. And then it that is what kicked off pretty much everything. Similar sort of scenario here. I don't know if we're going to, you know, double, whatever that that move did from there. Um, but a very similar sort of setup. We are in the, we are in the uptrend. We're in the bull regime. Uh, and so it's, there's just um, no reason not to be on the bullish side of these as they move. Um, as we dipped, 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 dipped in here, we had our big capitulation down to 58 K and then it reversed. Okay. That was my first sign that, okay, this is tradable. You know, we, you get a big reversal. Let's wait and see. Then we get our up, down, up, re, you know, that retest pattern that we want to see. Um, and then on Saturday we had our lowest, oops, our lowest range day in, in a week or so. And that's been the case Saturday, you know, Saturday, 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 Saturday. You can see all Saturdays. And that's because Bitcoin futures to a lesser extent and Bitcoin ETF to a much larger ex extent only trade Monday through Friday. Uh, they don't trade 24 seven like spot. So um, that's typically why you get such a small day. And then what that does is that allows these systematic, traders to myself to have these nice tight risk reward ranges that can be exploited. So 61,200 entry runs all the way up to 63.8. So that was a, a 1600 point runner came back down to retest. What we want to see is that that breakout retest and then a move much higher from here. I'm expecting a move up to 72, 74 K uh, stop is down in this area right in here uh you know 57 most likely would 
be our next level. If those don't hold, then, you know, we start looking at this area down in here. So I definitely want to have my stops in. Now that leads me to the, um, let's go to our analog and you can see, uh, if we're looking at the 2016 analog, we are right there and it's starting to, you can see we had our high heading into that, that yellow line, I believe yellow is the 2016, 2018 Bitcoin price into the halving happens over here. And then for the next, it's approximately, uh, so a hundred and, um, so, so it's like 90 days or so is about the range. And then, so from before you get, and then somewhere in there after 90 days is when you start heading towards new all time highs, something around 90 or higher. Um, it looks like it's like 120, I think is when you start getting at the new all time highs and then they break. So what does that mean? If the analog is a guide, which is how you use analogs guides, um, it means we're going to start our up move here. We're going to drift into all time highs, bang around at all time highs. That's a common occurrence. You can see here, common here, common as we, you know, saw Apple, um, in our, in our previous chart, you know, bang around all time highs, bang around, bang around. It goes finally gets to all time highs and then tries again, tries again. It's common across all asset classes that trend. Okay. Mean reverting assets like currencies, not so much because that's not a, unless you're talking dollar yen at the moment. <laughs> um, so uh, right now, strongest one is Solana. We have Bitcoin and Ethereum, both kind of, you know, certainly performing, but Solana is, is, you know, two times the performance of Bitcoin and Ethereum. Um, I'll get to Solana in a second, but uh, <clears throat> one thing I wanted to point out and Look, I don't know if this one is, uh, so this is called the Fed Ned Liquidity Rate of Change. Okay, this is a um, the rate of change of the Fed adding liquidity to the balance sheet. This looks like the biggest rate of change that we've seen, well, since 2023, back uh, during the banking. So this would have been the banking crisis back in March, 2023 is when that happened. So it appears to be uh, something of interest. This is the rate of change, not the actual net liquidity. Um, so that appears to be interesting. Why do I bring that up? Because when you have things like Apple breaking out, uh, Tesla, now let's also take a look at what else is at all-time highs breaking out right now. We've got things like Amazon all-time high breaking out, right? We've got things like, uh, uh, sorry, that was uh, that was Google. This one's Amazon all-time high breaking out. They look all look identical, and you know it's a rot it's been a rotation from what was leading the way, which was Nvidia. Meta is still up here at that high level basing for quite a while. Mm -hmm. So um, what I'm going to guess is we're going to start seeing this whole board uh, sending higher based on this Fed net liquidity rate of change. Um, I do have it tracked here, uh, net liquidity. I don't know how frequently it is reported. August 2024, July. So it's a monthly. No, that's fine. Let's see if we can get. 8th, 15th. So it's a two-week lag, it looks like. It's a two-week lag from what we're seeing on the this indicator here. So I can't confirm it. I was I was hoping to make that happen, but I cannot. Uh, this is Cole Garner's take, at Cole Garner's take on Twitter. Um, he said, uh, last time that happened, Bitcoin rose 40% in one week. Uh, we'll go back to the... Uh, now, or sorry, let's take a look at Solana because this is the one that's most interesting to me. We take a look at Bitcoin. Yes, we reversed. Yes, we came up. We had that reversal down, uh, that retest down. What Solana didn't do was a similar sort of thing, right? This would have been uh, the Saturday trade, Sunday, Monday here. Tuesday, it sent. Today, it sent up, up about 5% while Bitcoin was down 
Uh, oops, Bitcoin was down. Uh, one and a quarter percent, maybe one and a half percent. Um, so what we see here is the stronger asset, in my opinion, uh, leading the charge here. Okay. So what does that also mean? You know, you can see, let's go back to that March time frame, uh, which this would have been that move on. So not as responsive as Bitcoin on Solana. So uh, just for that Fed intervention. But the point of the Fed intervention there, this uh, net liquidity rate of change, this is how much liquidity is in the system. The more liquidity that's in the system, risk assets go higher, which is why I believe as a whole, in a macro sense, we're getting the up move in Tesla, in uh, Apple, in Amazon, in Google. These are um, not deep tech. They, they have deep tech, but they don't sell deep tech like NVIDIA. Right. So NVIDIA, you, you could look at it as a uh, an investment in the AI boom and, and the infrastructure. It's like, you know, the, the analog that everybody's looking at is Cisco. And what actually won from that dot com era was the things that people can use, that people can invest in, that investments are are needed in is not just not just building the technology for the technology's sake, but the actual products that get bent to benefit from that technology, which is the story of what Apple's doing right now, right? Uh, kind of the, the whole point of what I talked about with Apple is sure, AI is great, Gen AI is great. These LLMs are super cool. I spend you know four to six hours a day, every day, coding with AI uh, tools. Um, like, and it has electrified my productivity but I'm a one-off and I, you know, I'm, I'm not trillions of dollars of market cap either. I'm just, I'm just me. <laughs> um, and, uh, and that's the, that's the thing. So right now we've got our trend, we got our breakout. We have a new high retest breakout. Uh, we bought the, uh, uh, three twenties, I believe, or two sixty calls, two sixty calls, two sixty calls, I think on these currently traded 220. Um, they're at uh, six months out. So, you know, we, we, I'm expecting a move pretty significant in these names. Uh, that is, I believe that's what I got here, right? Yes, that's all I have. Um, if you like this, subscribe to the newsletter, paulnatraining.com, like, subscribe, share this video to a friend or an enemy. Um, <laughs> just helps if you do it. And I really appreciate it. And I love you guys. And we'll chat later.